see. Hello. Okay. Oops. Hello, my darlings. Hello. Hold on one moment. Are you posting? I'm taking care of stuff. Okay. Post a link on that uh, post I made about being live at nine. If you can, please. Hello, my friends. Hello. Look at the glare's back. Oh, glare. Glare. I oh, know, we only have desk lamps, so I need to get some overhead lighting, I, I'm guessing. Because of the shiny things are just a little too brutalized by all this overhead stuff. But, till I get more Patreons or sell some of this stuff, then that's how that's going to have to be. I do like my little dot for my B. I used a button. I made the button, though. I can be way over here now. All right. Well, the video is rolling whether anybody's here or not, so I'm going to get on with it. thought I could do without my fan, but there are little tiny bugs bothering me. So turn it all the way down. I hate bugs. Let's put all that to the side. Okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to do some drawing to map out kind of what I want for Ralph the Mystical Unicorn, which is the unicorn that will be going on this background that I painted last night. And magical forest background. With. All the fireflies vanished, though. I had fireflies painted on it, but the glow-in-the-dark paint uh, just sort of dried transparent, so. And anyway, this is what it is. And I'm going to paint a unicorn right here in this area. And he's going to be my insignia unicorn, or logo unicorn, or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, he's going to be Ralph the Unicorn, is going to be there in all his majestic glory. So I need to kind of plan out what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to start drawing. Alright. Let me get some of my supplies together here. Okay, what I use is probably going to horrify you. And yes, I do have better pencils. But I just like a number two pencil with a white eraser. That's what I like to do my pencil drawing with. I have all the others. I just don't like them as much as a plain old number two. Maybe because I've drawn with it so much in the past. Just kind of know what it's going to do. You trying to say there's nothing like plain old number two? Uh, a good number two always makes your day better. Yes, it does. <laughs> number one is somewhat fun, but number two will always do. <laughs> but you didn't know I was so poetic, did you? Like a, you, you, you like a you, you like a you like a harder firmer pencil or one that's a little softer like a little softer okay harder and firmer just 
scratches everything up. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. Oh my god, we're having this conversation. <laughs> oh, oh. Lord oh, and Lord. Fun times. Well, you know, that's how you get subscribers. Subscribe, subscribe. people! <laughs> subscribe. Hit the magic button. Push the button. Subscribe. Push the button. Yeah, that's it. Subscribe. Push the button. Woo! Okay. I've been drawing since I was two years old, and I always do this the same way, and it is not going to be the proper way, and it's not the way I would teach anybody to draw. It's just the way I do things. So, number two pencil. What kind of paper I got here? Just drawing in a Strathmore uh, colored pencil book here. This is just... They have not sponsored anything, but that's okay. I It's just what I like to use. I don't have any sponsors yet. Other than my Patreons, which I love dearly. Okay. Okay, he's going to be facing that direction. Whoops. Uh, so we're just going to start. I always start with the shoulders. Just, I like to start with circles. Okay. And I have him at a slight angle, but not a huge one. neck up here. His head. Uh, let's see. He's going to be... This is a caricature sort of a style. It's... So it... It's going to end up a little weird. This isn't a realistic drawing. I don't want... Ralph is not a realistic creature. He's, he was named Ralph by my Facebook friends. I had a, did a couple drawings of him and uh, I had them, I had a poll set up and they chose the name Ralph. I like about the white erasers is that you go back and erase it doesn't they, they don't leave a streak like the pink ones do so I just get some of these little replacement caps okay I think we're going to have him you know I started this too far now His leg. I want him to have long legs, so let's start this over again. I'm not wasting a sheet of paper. I'm going to leave those few little streaks on it. Alrighty then, let's try this again this up a little bit for the moment. Okay, let's do this again. Get the shoulders in there. I'm gonna make it also a little bit smaller. I think we're going to go with a little bit more acrobatic. So we'll tilt. Okay, we got the shoulders in here in the barrel. And let's get the hips down this way. Now this, you're going to probably look at this and think, well, a horse wouldn't go in this position. But that's okay, because he isn't a horse. He's our magical, mystical unicorn. Where it comes to unicorns, there's no rules. There are no rules. Unicorns, like Mr. Scrinkles, do not judge. Right? <laughs> in there. That's a little bit better. 
And his neck is arched. I like thick arched necks. When it comes to caricature, I, I don't go with the anime style. I go with... I'm just exaggerating the things that I find funny or interesting about a creature. And then I try to make them kind of hold the same uh, sort of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Consistency. Consistency. There you go. Consistency. Alright. How many folks do we have with us today so far? I think we're it so far. in there, so you know where we're going here. Still, with uh, cartooning anything, it's important to have at least a small grasp of anatomy. Which a lot of kids these days are skipping. I.e. humans with no noses. And gigantic eyeballs. And no lips. <laughs> Michelle. <That's, laughs> I think it's cute. <sighs> I'm sorry. I like the anime style. Blasphemy. Artistic blasphemy. Turn his ears back. Well, he's got to have his attitude going on here. Can you see the uh, drawing? Pictures of Ralph. Right here. I might as well go through my sketchbook a little bit. Look at this dude, and he keep I could color paint, drew him, and color penciled him. And there's that girl. <laughs> I like her. You like her? I'm a stoner lizard. Excuse me, I should not have said that word on YouTube. My uh, hipster lizard. That's what we'll call him. Hipster lizard. Uh, bird knight riding a saber tooth squirrel. Work in progress. Saber tooth squirrel. Uh, little uh, Lolita dressed girl on top of a dragon. Horse dragon. Oh, there we go. There's Ralph. It's one of my drawings of Ralph. Ralph the mystical unicorn. Ralph is awesome. <laughs> Ralph. Eva does this great um, derpy character design. <laughs> and I love it. There's nothing more cool than seeing derpy horses. There's a lizard dude riding a thingamabob. Not sure what that, where I'm going with that. Oh, here's another Ralph. Mystical rearing Ralph. Let me go check that. This thing in there. Just a moment. Make sure Bridget's not having any problems. So. Oh, yes. Uh, sorry. Walked away without setting up the little... There. Ralph says subscribe. While you're waiting for me to come back, subscribe.
I will be Uno Momento. Entertain people, Michelle. Entertain people, yes. Please stand by. Uh, this drawing will continue in just a moment here. But for now, let's talk about a problem that many Americans face in this day and age, and that's strange cats. They get into things, they jump up on shelves, and they just generally misbehave. What do you do with strange cats? Well, there's not much you can do because they rule the house and you're just their minion. So, I have no further advice to give on this issue. We're just in a little standby mode here right now. But as it says, please subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there. We'd love to have you on board. Remember, the more subscribers we get, the more we get noticed, the more we get loved. And wouldn't you feel good about being a part of that love? Now, of course, eels are loved too, but that's a story for another video and another day. Feel free to jump in the chat. I am monitoring the chat the whole entire time. So um, feel free to, to jump into the chat if you are, are viewing and uh, we can talk to you. And there is a fly on the subscribe sign. So there you go. There's your proof that we are currently live because there is a fly on the sign and the fly goes away. Oh, wow. Who's going to lose interest in this? Who's going to love us? Who's going to stick with us? I'm coming. I'm coming. You hear my little old lady slippers shuffling on the floor? Okay, I'm back. All right, peeps. Anyway, this is Ralph drawing him in another pose. That's Ralph in this pose. Ralph. We need a, a Ralph song. Michelle. Can we sing a Ralph song? Okay, going back to my page, if I can find it. Ralph. Ralph. Ralph, 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 Ralph. Ralph, 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 Ralph. Don't make that noise. Ah, here is a brief, quick glimpse at a secret project. Gone. Can't tell you about it yet. <laughs> okay. Back to the drawing. I'm just basing out what sort of pose I want him in. It's got to be dramatic because this he's my mascot. So Bridget just jumped on the chat and said, I'm watching. Hi Ralph. <laughs> Ralph says, Hi Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> He's a unicorn. Do unicorns win? I don't know. Do we, okay, there's a good question out there for all of you fantasy art people. We always we always see unicorns, okay? Right. Unicorns Everybody loves unicorns. Just exist everywhere. You know, little girls love them, bronies love them. Everybody loves unicorns, okay? You know, they make unicorn everything. I mean, unicorns to hang on your wall. Unicorns that you can float on two miles out off the shore of Miami. So, um, <laughs> the question is, is this. Does a unicorn... What... What's, does, does a unicorn sound like a horse? Does it whinny? Does it sneeze like a horse? Does it crap like a horse? Oh, no, that's right. We got... That's right. The, that's right. Uh, unicorn poop. <laughs> Is you know yeah. rainbow colored, right? But still, and edible apparently. If you look at some of the YouTube videos out there, <laughs> well, I mean, isn't it horse poop? Never mind. No, um, 
No, they poop rainbows and, and sprinkles. Yeah, they poop and all rainbow kinds sprinkles. Of, they poop all kinds of stuff. I gotta draw his eyeball in here. Just it, it, it may get erased, but he just has to have a, a look as to this is describing his the, he's listening to the conversation and he's shocked and horrified. By well, yeah, because we're we're considering his fate right now, and uh, as far as so for right now, he's going to look. That's that's his expression for now. Because right now, he has no voice Can you in, see him? In, in, in this discussion. He says, uh, uh, wait a minute, people. I, uh, um, can we talk about this? I need a Ralph voice. Ralph. Ralph. I, I'm Ralph the Unicorn. <clears throat> no, that's not going to work. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, yeah, okay. So, a talking unicorn. Okay, let's get his legs mapped out. Yeah, so... I think it's right up there with a the talking eel. Um, <laughs> He's going to have sort of a... Almost a... Saddlebred uh, sort of a... Pose for his back end here. Sort of a... Maybe like a greyhound. Like it. Um, I'm well, not, not really going sure. to... I don't think... I don't think it would be appropriate to make him sound like Mr. Ed. No. Gosh, Wilbur. <laughs> uh, uh, you don't. No, that's, yeah, that's, you want to. That's, that's not going to work. You're um, the voice person. Michelle can do an amazing array of voices. I can. Sometimes. Sometimes. Oops. Drop that. Hawk down a little bit. And I'll leave the hawk there. Moving things around here a little bit. He's got to have some muscle in the back end, so. Greetings, new viewer, whoever you are. Feel free to hello, jump in the chat and say who you are. Hello, hello. No, no social pressure. Nope. It's maybe too visible because he has feathery feet. Put his ankle about there. It's a little too big on the hoof. Now, once again, if you missed it, I'm just using a regular number two pencil. When it comes to cartooning, that's just good enough. If I was yeah. doing a super realistic drawing, I'd probably not do that. Doing cartoons and taking tests. Actually, I think I'm going to tuck his Lego under a little bit more. A little more majestic. He is majestic as... Oh, I should not say that word. He is majestic AF. Right? That's how you say it, right? Without being horribly offensive. He's got cloven hooves, unlike some unicorns these days seem to nap me here. Better than the fly that was bugging me last night. tail. I kind of like those plumy tails. Not really a horse tail. It's a little more of a uh, I don't know. A little more of a like they can curl like a like a almost like a cat but not a cat's tail. It has the exaggerated lion tassel at the end of it. Longer than a donkey or a mule. 
I like it to curl back around. Little wisps of hair that come off. Just fly around. For me, drawing, it's the, the devil is in the details. That's, if you're drawing, if you're new to drawing on your own, it's, they cover up a magnitude of errors. Okay, everybody loves a flying mane, right? Lots and lots of mane and forelock. All that good stuff. Let's get the surprised look off his face for a while. Let's chill him out a little. There. There, now he's a little more little more serious about everything. I do give them sort of human brows uh, in my cartoons because it just, you know, the, the human expressions are a little easier to translate for the average human viewer. I mean, not... Uh, many of my friends know, you know, are the horse people, so they know what a horse looks like when it's about to do something bad. And that's a different expression than a human would human would make when they go to do something bad. Oh, I'll give you one. All right, I have a question for people. You can help me decide this. How much of a, a goatee does he need? Does he even need one? In the other pictures, I kind of have one, but sometimes it feels like it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So what do you think? Should he should he have a goatee or not? Hmm. Good question. To me, it's not a do-or-die unicorn feature. So neck, since it's down like this, it's kind of wrinkly. So we'll give him a few wrinkles. Not too many, though. We'll give him muscles, because he's a manly unicorn. A little bit of shoulder, a little bit of elbow fluff. And I'm just going to hint at the male parts here. He's a stallion, but he doesn't need to go around advertising it. Okay, now that I kind of have him based in, I can start to darken the lines a little bit. I'll double check here. I, sometimes I have to set it up, make sure it's portion. Make it to my eyes here. My Oh, yeah, those front legs, the elbow to the knee joint. I got that way off. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I kind of just use my fingernails. The points of my fingernails, I'll hold it right at the point of the elbow and right in the center of the knee. And try to hold it. Point of the elbow to the center of the knee. Um, just not really that far off. Let me try it again here. Point of the elbow, center of the knee. On the elbow, center of the knee. I'm kind of. It looks wrong, but it isn't wrong. If that makes any sense. To me, it looks wrong. Okay. To me, it looks like this leg is a lot shorter. Now I'm just going to get rid of some of the lines that I'm not going to use. Again, that's where the white eraser comes in extra handy because it's not going to leave any pink streaks. This paper is a very hard paper. That's it's a colored pencil paper, so it's kind of made for pencils to be grinding around on it. And where did I get this? I got this at uh, Michael's Arts and Crafts. They had a buy one sketchbook, get one free sale, so 
I believe at the time I got this, I bought one for my niece, who was having her birthday, and she loves uh, books with outlines in them to draw, to write and draw in. So we got her one of those sort of sketchbooks, and then for myself, we grabbed this one here. It's the extra. I try to get things on sale or use coupons, whatever. No shame in saving you money. Okay, let's... Okay, oh, I need to map out where his horn's going. Okay, I tried to do a right angle. Okay, but that's what, the top of his head. If I draw an invisible straight line from the top of his head to right... the top knot of his head right between his nostrils that gives me a line and it comes out of his forehead I like it to come out of the center of the forehead so I will do a, a rough right angle and that's where I'll put the horn okay you know I could actually use an, a real ruler to make sure I got a straight line here you can actually check and make sure it's a good right angle, too. Okay, let's put that on there. I'm not too far off. Okay, now from there to there. Make it. We're drawing a little thin triangle. Just roughly. Doesn't have to be perfect. side lines. Get rid of that imaginary line from head to nose. Okay, Ralph. Okay. I like a spiral horn. So I'm just gonna at first just gonna go light little cross lines at an angle getting a little bit smaller towards the tip okay now that I got that I go back in with a harder line and draw it a little bit rounded out bulge on each one of those little bumps it's not important to get them perfect it won't look like a if you get them perfect it's that's the thing is if you're going for something that you want to look like it's natural and not mechanical don't make your lines perfect you, lines are not perfect in nature if you look at a narwhal's tooth all the spirals aren't exactly mathematically the same there's variations there's little gouges and dents and Kinds of thing. Not that, you know, you're going to actually see a narwhal anywhere anytime soon. I mean, they're there, but I've only ever seen one once in my life. That was in Alaska. And they were majestic. You know, I don't think we're actually going to see that other ear with the mane here. Okay, let's get a forelock in there. Now, well, the forelock that piece of long hair that comes down between a horse's ears for anybody that's not into horses and we're just kind of kind of split it and a big section of hair coming off to the side you remember part I think it's time to sharpen my pencil Anybody saying anything? Alright. 
Michelle, how I have this is we're really only going to see one eye. Is that going to be a problem for having him blink in stop motion? Okay. Take your time. Come look at him. Come look at the unicorn. See, the angle I've got isn't mm -hmm. quite uh, directly on, so you can see the other one. So if it's just one eye that blinks, that would be fine, wouldn't it? I think so. Because what I want him to do is to be, while we're assembling the numbers, is, is or the letter says I, I'll be like looking that direction, like he's, you know, mm -hmm. looking over his shoulder a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I want him to close his eye, and when he blinks, I want to have it looking at the viewer. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this just happened. <laughs> and we need a laser beam, and you can destroy all the letters. Oh, and after the, the, the letter B, I don't know if you saw this or not. Oh, show the people here. I made a button! It's a cute little button! Mm -hmm. So it'll be this, the dot after the B. That'll oh, work. A little dust. I don't know, that's a little flaws. Anyway. I thought it would be cute. Better than that little, this little thing that I cut out that's not even anything. Yeah. Anyway, drawing the unicorns. And I'm going to center up his nose here a little bit. Oops. Make it a little more where it should be. His nostrils are all flared and snorty. Is snorty a word? Snorty word? Is snorty a word? S N O R T Y. Um, we can make it a word. It's a word now. There is a cat under my desk again. Marvin. Marvinsky, get out of there. Shoot, come on. Get out of there. For heaven's sakes, cat. I wonder where that thumping was coming from. It was shaking the desk. Subscribe. Subscribe. All right. I like exaggerated joints. To me, it makes an animal look a little sillier. And especially if something's got long legs, it, I like to exaggerate that. It, when I draw a moose, they have really long legs anyway. And I love the big joints. And I think it's funny. I love animals so very much. Even after I was attacked by a moose, and put in the hospital and got stitches. I still love them. What happened was we, I was, I guess it was about nine or ten. We just had a birthday party and it was in winter. And it wasn't my birthday. I was born in August. But, um, we decided, there was like four of us, and we decided we were going to go ice skating. And the closest place to ice skate without having the parents drive us somewhere was down at the end of my driveway across the road. And there was a swamp out there that in the winter would freeze solid. And the center of it didn't have any reeds growing up through it. So, it's more or less a peat bog, I guess. Anyway, we were out there ice skating on this natural little pond. We we're all having a great time. And keep in mind, we're all Alaskan kids that, that know the ins and outs of being safe around wild animals. So, a moose 
an adult moose showed up on the east side of the lake, a little pond, peat bog, and we appropriately shifted to the other side of the pond and continued ice skating. Well, lo and behold, it was a mother moose and her baby appeared on our side of the lake. And there we were, all of us, right between a mother moose and her baby. Now, we all know that's a bad situation. We knew that was a bad situation. So, we decided that we needed to get the heck out of there as quick as possible. So, running as a group would only have the mother chase all of us. So, we split up and ran in different directions. And I was the unfortunate one that got chased. And here we are on ice skates. And we're taken off into the, back into the little bit of woods we had to go through. And then the other girls were circling around. I was heading more directly to the, to the road. And the mother moose caught up with me and struck me in the lower back butt cheek area with her, with her front hooves. And at that point, I slipped on the ice skates, tripped over a piece of wood and fell down. She lost interest in me and took off to go see where her baby was. All the other girls had gotten out, including my sister. I think my sister was there. Anyway, went back home. You know, I was just a little in shock about it all. But uh, I had no idea I was bleeding so badly until we got near the house and my my friend Wendy screamed and said, You're bleeding! And I was like, No! And then I reached around and I felt the, the wet blood and I was like, Oh, crap! So I went and got her parents and it whisked, a, whisked me off to the hospital where I got about 20 stitches in the one area. I had a mess of stitches. I don't even remember what the count was anymore. That was back in the 70s. Anyway, there was, there was no need and no call to eliminate the mother moose. She was only doing what was natural. She was was saving her baby from us invading humans. And it, it was just an unfortunate accident. We understood that it was an unfortunate accident. I'm not afraid of moose. And I mean, I don't have like nightmares, too many nightmares about them. I have a few. But I still kind of, I, I, I enjoy them. I, I realize how dangerous they are now. And I respect them. And I think that people don't understand just how majestic those creatures are. They're just big and intimidating. Yeah, they're super huge. In Alaska, they are super huge. They're as big... Well, yeah, uh, well, I can't remember how big the one was that, that hit, struck me, but she was every bit as tall as a normal horse. And they usually come much taller in Alaska than a horse. Probably about, you know, well, than your average horse. About 17 hands. The bulls, if you measure from the shoulder, you know, are, they're much taller than that. Yeah. Yeah. Kim yeah. Brodell on oh. the chat said, Hi, Eva, looks great. Hi, Kim. figured out how to subscribe. Yay. Yay, we need more subscribers. Yay. Yay. Hello, Kim. Yay! I'm glad you found us. Enjoyed the pictures you posted today, and I always enjoy the pictures you post of Sasha. Oh, he's such a pretty kitty. And I can I love a spoiled cat, and I can tell he's a little bit spoiled. Carol was supposed to be here, Carol, but she had to go to, to bed earlier, early for work, so she's not going to be coming on tonight. But she'll catch this in, in rerun. That's fine. Just 
get rid of some of the excess lines I don't need. This leg still isn't looking quite right. That's just my art style, though. I just make mistakes, and then I fix them as I go along. And hopefully they're happy little mistakes, like Bob Ross would say. Oh, by the way, Michelle, I, I mentioned, I guess in, in last night's video, I mentioned Bob Ross so many times that, uh, uh, that YouTube picked it up in an algorithm. I said I mentioned Bob Ross so many times last night that YouTube picked me up in an algorithm. Yeah. And when I logged in on the uh, uh, in the the bedroom there to go see what how many views I had, mm -hmm. and I looked through the video, and then after that, its next up played video was a Bob Ross. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of my heroes. I won't say he's one of the greatest artists of all time, but he's. One of the few artists that that have helped people to understand that art is kind of a feeling. It's, it's a way to put yourself in a little magical place that, that you've created or you've watched someone else create. And for that, he was a pioneer. And I'm the world is a much worse place without him. I did briefly for a while have a Bob Ross teaching certification, but it expired a long, long time ago. It was back when you had to pay to be a teacher and you had to keep up with the little classes that they offered, and I never did, so never kept up with them. Doesn't mean I, you know, I just had other things going on at the time. But yeah, I love Bob Ross. I used to enjoy the shows, what was the other guy, uh, Alexander? Somebody or other. He's like an older guy with German, I think, accent. He was neat. I'm just putting little wispy hairs along his tail here, along the, the tailbone. And it goes into this plumy. There's hair coming off of the crest. Now, I know his mane and tail are blowing all over the place, but he's a unicorn. Unicorn, this unicorn emits magic that has his hair blowing around like Fabio. <laughs> I love Fabio. Great, now I'm probably going to pick up another YouTube algorithm where it's going to show Fabio videos. Ear is going to show just the point of it over here. Michelle, come talk to me. I don't know where she ran off to. Sorry, say again. Where'd you go to? Trying to get a couple things taken care of here. Oh, okay. I was just missing my co host. Mm -hmm. you, had, you had five views right now. Oh, I saw it as hi, everybody. As seven. Hi, people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And let's, I'll reiterate what I'm doing here. I am working on a drawing of Ralph, which, Ralph the Unicorn, which will be going, which I, I will be painting his image on 
this painting, this, it's just a little cartoony background. Uh, trying to tilt it so the glare doesn't murder it. I painted this last night live. Um, if you watch that and are wondering where the uh, fireflies all went, well, the paint, the glow-in-the-dark paint dried transparent on me. So, shows up when I turn the lights out, but in the light you can't see them, so I'm going to have to go in and repaint some. Well, there's a few of them that still, are still there, like there, up there, there. But, uh, actually, yeah, let's try this. Let me turn out the lights here, and we'll see if we can see any. Nope, they're not glowing tonight. Oh, well, on with the lights. But yeah, Ralph will be uh, painted in the middle of this, in this little magical glen, meadow, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, once that's done and Ralph is painted on there, he will be getting, uh, I have semi-transparent lettering for my channel here. Spell my own name would be nice. It'll be somewhere on him, sort of like that. Not sure. These will be removed. They won't, they'll be just on there temporarily, just for the sake of advertising my channel. Kind of like that. We'll get that mess off in for now. is in here joined me. He's lounging in a box. This leg bothers me. So I'll turn it at this angle. Sometimes just turning things at a, at a different angle will clarify what you're doing wrong. You can kind of maybe pick up from there and fix whatever it is. I don't know if I'm fixing it or making it look worse. Okay. Oops. In this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise his feathering up to the hawk. So, placement of that leg bone is not as much of an issue. Now, I want to measure, like I did before, to see if I'm anywhere near the same on the other one. And I'm not. Okay, so maybe that is a problem. Maybe I've got his hawk up too high. That might be a problem. Okay. We can scoot that whole mess down. If we can, we can fix this unicorn right up. Okay. You know, I'm going to do that, redo most of this whole back leg. Again, white eraser, love them. Don't leave any pink marks. Okay. Okay. Okay, what we're going to do, I think we're going to tilt it back like it's just coming off the ground. Yeah, that's better. Maybe not. Hmm. No. Not feeling it. Not feeling it. Okay, let's do this then. We're going to pull his leg in a little here. Let's oh, thigh. Thigh to the hip. To the hook. Do 
joint to have. Right? right? Okay, let's measure that. Yeah, that's better. There we go. That's better. First, you don't succeed, try, try again. I guess giving up and going and crying in a corner would also be a uh, option. I apologize if I have a slightly abrasive voice. I'm trying to speak, learn to speak more quietly. I've had really no training in public speaking other than just going ahead and saying something. Of course, moving the leg further in doesn't give as much of a separation between this leg and that leg. It is what it is. Trying to skinny him up here a little bit so it does show. I like to have a, a good separation in the legs because that is less confusing visually. Or somebody who's just glancing at the picture and then moving on. You don't want him to stop and go, uh, is, are his legs melted together? I think since his leg is a little more forward, his muscles are going to come in a little more. Yeah. I think he's a little more dog-like in this back end than you know, horse like I guess, in, in a lot of ways, but... flowing mane. Okay, uh, new people. Uh, with the unicorn, should you have a goatee or not? Somebody please help me decide. I need your help. Goatee or not? To goatee or not to goatee? That is the question. Michelle is going to read any comments to me. I don't have a way to look at them right here. I'm just filming on my phone. Cloven hooves. Also, should I paint them a gold color? Or is that a little too stereotypical? What are your thoughts, Michelle? Paint what a gold color? His hooves. Should a unicorn have golden hooves? Sure, why not? Or black hooves? Or. Yeah, black hooves, it would be a unicorn. The unicorn's got to have golden it would, hooves. It would be a horse with a horn attached to it. And cloven hooves. You know, because... And a lion tail. A stylized a lion tail. Horn. Yeah. Anybody can attach a horn with a big rubber band and, you know... <laughs> have you seen those inflatable horns that uh, they make for people to attach to their horses' bridles? No. Oh, those are awesome. They're just inflatable little plastic horns that are about a foot long or so. And you could attach them to your, uh, the brow band of your horse's bridle. Mm -hmm. And it looks, to make him look like a unicorn. You gotta have a patient horse. And 
few extra dollars to play with, but yeah, it's really cute. No. No, we cannot. Wait! I wonder if I can move this box into the zone here. Everybody, this is Weebles. Hello. Don't walk around. Say hi. Say hi, Weebs. Say hi. You're not going to say hi. Alright, I'm moving you off of here. This is this is box. Well, there he is. Oh, and he didn't even leave the box. Cats <laughs> and boxes. A little bit of a mess here. Dust on the thing. It's the mess my cat made. Okay. going to put a tendril of hair over his shoulder, but I kind of like the masculine, muscular withers and the manly. Ralph is manly. Let's put his eye a little. Hey, Michelle, sing us a song. Since we can't use any copyrighted music. Copyrighted music? <laughs> Normally, I would just turn on some music. Yep. Any answers on the goatee? I don't like it directly on the chin. So we'll back here we want a little few little short hairs that lead up to the longer hairs. Because you see anything that's got a beard growth in the wild like goats or some horses, actually, I guess the Gypsy Vanners and whatnot, they have a little bit of that sort of hair. It always is a lot of shorter, um, I guess, medium length hairs that lead up to the longer hairs. So adding them just gives a little extra touch of maybe this thing could exist. Some neck wrinkles. Because if something's got its neck tucked down that far, it's going to have wrinkles. Chest muscles. Biceps. Knee knuckles. A little more sharpened. Go and a little more fluff to the raised hoof. A cascade of hair that comes down, comes up this way and down this way, Whoosh, like a like a waterfall of horse hair. Unicorn hair. There's that one. Group of hair, and then there's this one that curls up. Around. There 
droop of hair. Comes down like that too. swirl here over the top of his withers. Okay. He doesn't have a bridal path, even though that's tempting to put in there, so... Really, he shouldn't have one because he's not tamed. He is wild and majestic Rolf the Unicorn. Right? Wild and majestic AF. Unicorn. Oh, my nose itches. What's that supposed to mean? Somebody's talking about you and your nose itches or your ear? What's the superstition there? One of those is supposed to be for your nose or your ear itches, somebody's talking about you. If you shiver, that means somebody's stepped on your grave. I think. My grandmother was superstitious. She would not let us use scissors or cut anything on a Sunday. Honestly, I haven't been really superstitious about anything in a long time. Dropped a lot of those. You have any superstitions? Now, I'm going on this drawing way beyond what I would use for a uh, reference, just a, just a picture to plan a painting. Mm -hmm. I'm just, it's just fun to just draw sometimes. Yep. And I hope you all who are looking are enjoying this as well, even if this is, even if you're not watching this live, I'm hoping you are enjoying it. Please give me a like or make a comment or something. If you comment, I will reply to you, even if it's rude. But if you reply with a rude comment, then I'm just going to leave you a rude answer. <laughs> Everybody. That goes for both of you. What? Honestly, it, it helps us a lot if you do click a like and a subscribe or make a comment or all three. I'm sure, you know, I'd like to reach a little bit wider audience. I'm sure there's some kids out there who probably should be in bed but aren't. It wouldn't mind watching somebody draw a unicorn. But because I can't reach that many people yet, I don't, I can't reach those kids or those people that are looking for semi-wholesome entertainment. We're not going to really talk about politics or religion here. Uh, we're keep it and keep our language, you know, as clean as, as possible. Just in case there are those who would be offended. I mean, this is not. We're not shock-jocking anything like, you know, this is just 
art. We're not. I want. I'd like this to be relaxing and be fun to watch. I hope it's fun to watch. You could, if you really, really like it, you could consider joining us on Patreon. Um, we are not people of, of a lot of means, and donating to that goes directly into the art fund. It would go to purchase art supplies or photography equipment to make these videos better. Um, it's, it's not going to be wasted. Also, you get cool uh, gifts when you join. And you can check out this here. There's, you can pause that and type that in if you want. Eraser blue on there. Oops, I almost said the, oops, the other word. Anyway, join us there. Check it out at least. Go look and, and see what sort of uh, little uh, things you could get for different uh, levels of helping us out. This is only my second video. I hope to do a whole lot more because this is fun and honestly I I like to share what I can do. Maybe it'll help other artists figure out what they're doing. Or maybe I'll learn something too, I don't know. I mean, also, if you see me making a glaring mistake, comment on it, and and uh, if Michelle's here to read the comment while we're live, then I'll see what I could do to fix it, or at least tell you why I'm not going to fix it. <laughs> Put this boy parts back in. We can't neuter him. Well, this would be worse than neutering. There's boy parts back in there. So Ralph is a boy. Like I mentioned earlier, his name was voted on. The uh, My Facebook friends made dozens and dozens of suggestions for a name. The top like five names I think that, that we liked we put it into a poll and they voted on which one they liked best and Ralph was the one by just I think one vote wasn't it mm, yeah it was close it was very close Mystical unicorn. I don't know what kind of cloven hooves these are. Ungulates are not my ungulates. Is that how you say it? Are not my specialty. But even in a caricature, like I said before, it's important to know a little bit about anatomy. I mean, you can break a lot of the rules. Art should have no rules. But I'm trying to depict something that looks alive, so knowing anatomy is it's kind of good. I mean, you don't even necessarily need to be good with horse anatomy to draw a unicorn. Your unicorn could be more like a goat. Or an ibex. Or 
a ram or a deer. I, I really like the deer type ones. This, uh, or those, the, the Japanese ones, the Kirin. Kirin. Kirin? Is that how you would say that? K-I-R-I-N. Kirin. 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 Well, I think it's named after the mythical animal. Yeah. I think it's like a deer with like uh with I think two horns, kind of like a uh, dragon horns. And I think it's quite fluffy. Mm. I think. I think it has scales too. people do we have now? Mm, just us. Oh, okay. What time is it? It's 10.20. Okay, I think we're only going to go about 10 more minutes, and then we're going to cut it. Because mm -hmm. I'm just about as done as I'm going to do on this one. Also, um, mention in the comments, you know, if you're watching this in, uh, in repeats here, uh, I need a good suggestion for a website or a place to sell drawings and little art bits that I make. I've not been having a whole lot of luck with Etsy. In fact, I don't think my shop is even active right now. I've tried eBay, but my stuff kind of gets lost in the confusion of Chinese uh, imports. I don't even know if anybody goes there to buy art anymore. I only go there to buy stuff I can't find in the U.S. And I, I will give it to the... Uh, the Chinese and the Singaporeans or Singaporeans? Is that Singaporeans. Right? Singaporeans. Mm -hmm. And the residents of Hong Kong is they are they do have a weird variety of goods for sale and they're they're a lot of fun sometimes. And if you're looking for something weird and obscure they are more likely to have it than an American shop. Okay, let's get the shadowing under here. That hoof's raised so there will be no ground line coming up yet. Smudge it out with my finger. This is a no-no for regular art, but because it puts oils from your hands on the paper, but this is just a planning stage. So I can do what I want. Just something about that butt cheek on this that I don't like and I can't figure it out. People can say that I was annoyed by a unicorn's butt cheek. I was annoyed <laughs> by a unicorn's butt cheek. Unicorn's butt cheek, unicorn's butt cheek. I was annoyed by a unicorn butt cheek.
And uh, in the comment section, don't bother uh, uh, helping me decide what kind of beard he's going to get because he's already got it. He's got his goatee. But yeah, if you were just looking for a simple drawing to purchase, where would you go to look for it? I mean, would you go to a, like a local craft show or third Friday or first Saturdays or whatever they call them, wherever you happen to be? Like those little market places? Would you find an artist and just commission it? I don't like to do commissions, though. It's, it's really hard for me to try to figure out what it, another person's vision is. And once... I obligate myself to try to draw the person's vision. I feel a lot of anxiety because that's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to to try to make somebody's dream come to paper. And I it's hard for me to deal with and I I do better artwork when I can just let it flow like this. And I apologize it, if somebody wants me to draw a unicorn, but for them, but but my anxiety level just can't take commissions anymore. I'm trying to get better about it. And if you, you know, and that's this isn't going to be everybody's cup of tea anyway. Uh, you probably you might be looking at this and going, Ugh, that's the ugliest unicorn I've ever seen. Well, Ralph would be hurt if you said that. Because Ralph has tender feelings for a mm -hmm. unicorn. But I personally, as the artist, it, my feelings won't get hurt. I have a little bit thicker skin than that. Oh, don't get me wrong. I might whine and bitch about what you said, but... Everybody has their own opinion, and you just can't satisfy everybody. And you don't, you know, if you're an artist, don't worry about trying to do that, because what's going to look like junk to somebody else is going to be somebody else's Mona Lisa. You know, I, I can't tell you the amount of times that I have entered a piece of artwork in a show, only to have it be rejected at one show, and the next show it has a blue ribbon on it. And I'm like... Okay, is this art or is this not art? <laughs> One person's trash is another person's treasure. Yeah, it's art is in the eye of the beholder, and it is. There are rules to try to make art look more appealing to people, and you can try to, to use those. And I would, if you're just learning, I would say go with those. Use those to learn, but. When it comes right down to it, there are no, in my opinion, there are no rules in art. And there are new forms of artwork popping up every day. And, or maybe they're just popping up to me every day because, you know, I've been looking, doing more DIY searches. But there are forms of art that I had no idea even existed. Vivariums! Those are cool! It's like a more of an open air terrarium, and people will set them up with like running water and waterfalls and little Amazon basin sort of. They're really artistic and beautiful, and I had no idea there was such a thing. I knew there were terrariums and aquariums, but I mean that's art to me. Vivrin is uh, like uh, no dos. Yeah, I was gonna say it's one of those uh, caffeine pills or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Legal speed. Yeah. We probably shouldn't use those words. The algorithm's gonna pick us up again, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would suck if somebody went onto YouTube and were trying to look up the cause and effects of Viagra, and boom, there's a unicorn DIY right there. <laughs> Well, no, there is a horn. 
Boing. You know? And it is firm and erect. Let's not go there. This is family hour. Uh, yeah. You know, no, somewhere no, no. in the world, it's not safe harbor right now. True. All right. We're going to steer away from that I conversation. We'll give you a scrapping on that one. We'll give him a sparkle at the end of his horn here. That looks stupid. I'm doing it wrong anyway. Okay. Little magic coming out of the end of his horn. Okay, what time are we at, Mademoiselle? We are currently at 10.29. Oops. Something. Wind's blowing out there. Something tapped against the window. Anyway, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Let me sign this. Okay. Okay, Ralph is, is ready. The next step will be to uh, trace him and uh, transfer his picture to... Once again, I will show this. His background that I did uh, the last... The very first YouTube video that, that we put up, it's there's a lot of glare in that video. There's a lot of glare in this right now, but uh, anyway, this is the painting that I did last night. I'm tilting it to get rid of that glare. He will be going right here in this area. Be going right there, and I will be painting him onto this dark forest background and uh, he'll be hopefully his white body will look really good against this and he will just stand out really boldly and I want it to be bold because this is going to be the uh, what do you call it a splash page or yeah. intro yeah. picture mm -hmm. for my channel my channel to which you should subscribe like and comment. I will reply to your comments. Or Michelle will reply to your comments, but it's most likely going to be me. Push the button. Push the button. You know you want to. Or join us on Patreon, or do both. And please do both. Please do both. It really does help us. Even just a, a simple subscribe, like, and comment. It takes a moment of your time, and it really makes a world of difference to us. I want to hear back from you. There we go. Can we see it? Can you see it now? Can you see it now? There we go. Okay. Do our jingle, Michelle. Art by Eva B. Louder now for the people in the back. Art by Eva B. <laughs> oh, almost forgot. Nothing political. Nothing political. Hey, I'm not political. <laughs> Bye. See you next time. I'm just a genius. <laughs> bigly. I'm a bigly genius. 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 I'm going to go on Twitter now. No, 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 no. Genius to my now. Now. <laughs> okay. I'll see you on Twitter. Not really. We're not on Twitter. Tweet, tweet. Don't go to Twitter. Tweet, tweet.